Hello YouTube and welcome to the third video in my Get Top Surgery With Me series. Today we are talking about how I am preparing for top surgery, which is in just a few days. My life will hopefully be made a bit easier by the preparations I have made to aid me in my recovery. So let's jump into this. I want to share a lot of things with you, things that I have bought because I've spent some money on trying to ease my anxiety about not being able to move and being a little T-Rex for a few weeks while I'm home. If you don't know, uh, when you have surgery you have to like stay at home and rest for a few weeks. I have a bit over two weeks off from work and during that time I am uh, Kind of expected to be a baby t-rex because I don't ha get to move my upper arms a lot, can't stretch out, can't move around, so we have the mobility of baby t-rex and probably some pain and discomfort in the body, so I find it important to try to prepare and make myself as comfortable as possible. So for the few categories of stuff I have, First things, the body. We begin even the day before surgery. This is uh, the soap that the hospital recommends you or requires you to use here in Sweden, which is a chlorhexidine uh, soap thing. So you take a shower and you use this the night before and the morning of surgery before you get into the to the hospital. And I'm like I'm a skincare person. I'm so worried about not being able to put on, put on like lotions and serums and hand creams after I do this probably really hardcore wash thing. So pray for the flakiness of my skin. Please pray. The second thing is once I've had surgery, I'm not going to be able to shower for maybe at least a few days, maybe even up to a week, a week I guess. So we have low wipes. I chose these cute baby unscented baby wipes with a bit little monkey on and some extra care intimate wipes because I don't know I just wanted the choice to let my intimate areas have some special extra sensitive care so wipe 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 for pain management I prepared and got a pack of paracetamol just because my friend said it would be a good idea to have some of that at home, so paracetamol. So the next category of stuff is the, the fashion and comfort category. Uh, being baby T-Rex you can obviously can stretch your arms up and put on a regular sweatshirt. So I have done my laundry and I have prepared uh, the, the sweaters I have with a zip, zipper. I have also got some very fancy t-shirts from the second-hand shop, like this one with the How! A wolf family, and I have cut off the sleeves and made big, big, big armholes, so I can just uh, push this over my head and then pop out my little arms like that without having to like whoop, whoop anything. So we have two of those, family wolf. And then we have, go cats, go! I don't know what this cat is playing, maybe ice hockey? Is this an ice hockey cat? Go ice hockey cat, go! Along with some sweatpants and leggings, that's my fashion choices of the recovery. I also, um, my surgery will be in a city where I don't live, so I'll be going by train home from the surgery. Uh, at the train I will probably want to sleep so I got this this is like a neck pillow but it's a noodle a neck noodle and made from memory foam mmm super cozy and I'm guessing I'm gonna want to sleep on the train home so I have this little noodle to take care of my neck while I'm sleeping mm. our next next section is the food and snacking area um, this is the biggest area. Let's begin with the snacks. What happens to me personally when I get ill or when I have some kind of 
pain or stuff is that I lose my appetite really quickly and I want to encourage myself to eat as much as possible because my body is sort of trying to rebuild parts of itself so eating seems like a really good idea so I have gotten oh, an assortment of smacky snacks uh, to like um, inspire my appetite if I'm not feeling like eating I have these kind of nut and uh, fruit bar stuffs with chocolate flavor because chocolate usually makes my appetite feel inspired and then I also have these uh, uh, smoothie pouches that it's just just enough it's not too much it's a small packet and they usually help me when I'm not in the mood to eat and my favorite favorite thing uh, I don't know if this is exists even outside of Sweden or maybe outside of Scandinavia uh, this is rose hip soup so this is like a fruit soup it's a powder you mix it with water you can mix it in a mug and it's a delicious warm soup fruit soup and I love it so much and it usually it's the thing that I usually can eat even if I don't have any appetite or feel like I don't want to eat anything at all I can usually get down a mug of rosehip soup so I have a five liter pack to keep me hydrated or nourished with the power of rosehip also in the food category is uh, baby T-Rex will not be able to do the dishes so I have invested in a shit ton of uh, cute single-use mugs <laughs> spoons pink cutlery and fruit look polar bear plates so when I don't want to do the dishes, I can just use these, or when I don't have a friend coming over who can help me. Also, the straws. And these, uh, I'm hoping this will work. <laughs> these have like a super long bendy part. So I'm gonna be able to bend them into some festive shapes. But yeah, this feels like an important thing because obviously I won't be able to T-Rex Oh, my way up to my face, so I'm gonna <laughs> sip my drinks through a zippy zippy straw. Also, if I get the kind of pain medication that uh, will slow your stomach down, like uh, morphine, codeine stuff, and just in general, because I will probably not be moving around as much as I do in my everyday life, my stomach will be slowing down. I got some uh, chia seeds because you can mix them with water and drink it and it will give your stomach some good jelly stuff to help keep things moving along. I also have some other fiber stuff in my pantry to just aid in the movement of things because I'm not looking forward to having like that big balloon tummy. Mm -mm. Not looking forward to that. That's all I had now in the food category. Then we have uh, just this random, I'm gonna be, I, I wear contacts so I will probably be wearing my glasses because contacts is a hassle. So I got this pack of glasses cleaning cloths just so I won't have to wash them and just, I can keep them clean nice and easily. The fourth section is entertainment. I'm obviously gonna watch YouTube and some series but then again I don't want to spend all of my time staring into a screen. So, oh, I am knitting. I used to knit so much and then I haven't been knitting for a while for several different reasons, but I picked up this uh, sock that I had lying around that I used to that I used to work on like I did I started knitting this a few years ago. So I have this to keep my hands busy and my creative mind busy and I also have a crossword puzzle magazine to keep my brain busy so those were all of my things now for what I have done to my home to sort of make things comfy 
Um, I, my friend has this uh, puffy, it's from Ikea, obviously, um, puffy pillow with a plastic cover that you can put on your lap and have your computer on it or your food or your knitting. Um, so I will use that so I can sit in my bed. You can see my bed behind me. It's pretty big and comfy, so I'll be hanging out in there. And there's my sofa. I will be hanging out in there. I also redecorated... I, I moved things around in my kitchen and my bathroom. So all the things that I use every day, like plates and cups, and uh, my skincare is easily accessible from, from T-Rex baby arms. I'm also going to make sure I clean as much as I can before I leave for surgery, so all my plants are taken care of, my floor is nice and clean, my clothes are washed and put away, so everything feels nice and serene when I get back. I'm also going to try to make sure I have the things I don't want to run out of, like toilet paper, paper towels, extra backup baby wipes, fruit, frozen fruit, basic stuff like oats and rice and milk and things that I don't want to run out of so I just have a my basic pantry stocked up. The next section of preparation is the more like emotional, mental, social preparement. So like I said I will be traveling from the city where I live to the city where I will have my surgery. So I'm taking the train and but I'm gonna stay with one of my friends who live in that city in Stockholm. Then my surgery is at 11 in the morning, so I'll be traveling to the hospital. Then I'm gonna have the surgery, and then my friend will come visit me. And I will stay the night at the hospital, so my friend will meet me the next morning and help me get to the train. I will take the train with my comfy noodle. And when I get home to the train station in my city, I have another friend meeting me there, will take me home. They will stay with me for the night, like sleep in my sofa. And the next day after that, my mother and my sister is actually coming visiting. So they will hang out with me and one of them might stay the night as well. So I have made sure that I have people around me to take care of me for every single part of my journey. That's like my first thing is like, I want people around me. So if you have that possibility, I would recommend. Also, I made a Facebook group and added people who live in my city that I I feel like I can, I'm close enough to ask for favors. So I'm just gonna use that as a place where I can say, hey, I'm gonna do laundry this Wednesday who wants to hang out with me and help me carry the laundry down to the laundry room and I'm feeling lonely now, anyone wanna come play a game or watch me knit? Mentally I had like my first oh my god this is fucking real, I'm having an anxious meltdown, everything is gonna go so bad, I'm so nervous moment like that, I had the first moment like that yesterday uh, Until up until yesterday I've been super calm, like just of course, worried, but in like a very distant kind of worrying way. I've been like, yeah, this is an exciting thing that's gonna happen. Let's see how this goes. I'm not sure. Da -da -da -da. Just let things be as they be. But yesterday, it just hit me in the face like a big baseball bat that, holy fuck, this is real. It's gonna happen. Am I prepared? I don't know. Do I want to do this? Yes, I want to do this, but my body's really scared and... Ah! So, assuming that if you two are going to have top surgery, at some point you're gonna have that kind of freak out moment, just know that it's okay and that you can just text a friend or write it down. Try to not go on to scary medical pages and Google every kind of uh, mistake or infection you could possibly find. It's fine to be scared. Even if you know mentally that you want to do this, your body is going to be like, oh, I want to go home, I don't want change. And that's fine. Be prepared that those kind of moments will happen. And as far as I understand, there will be some kind of uh, emotional confusion afterwards. You will have to see in some future videos how I feel and how I dealt with it. But as for my pre-op breakdown, it has happened. And it was okay. It was totally manageable. 
So this has been my video of preparing for top surgery. This was everything I had to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I didn't miss anything. If you have any further suggestions uh, to TV series to watch, things to do, how to prepare, please leave them in the comments. If you have any questions or whatever, just encouraging words, please leave them in the, leave them in the comments as well. I love reading your comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will talk to you the next time I make a video and I hope you are well until then. Bye bye!